Welcome to the Girls Marketing Podcast, your one-stop shop for all things marketing and the perfect backing track to your work day. Every week, we get up close and personal with marketers revolutionizing the industry so you can learn from the best in the game. From the latest marketing trends to building a successful marketing career, no topic is off limits. At Girls in Marketing, we champion progress, inspire change, and encourage women to take the marketing world by storm. Check out our website and membership to learn more and get involved, as we'd love to welcome you to our inner circle. Right, let's dive into another episode together. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Girls in Marketing podcast. Today we're going to be chatting all about vanity metrics. Now, vanity metrics are, it's kind of like a bit of a buzzword, isn't it, in marketing. Social media used to be a lot about how many followers have you got? How many likes have you got? And then I kind of feel like Instagram brought in the aspect of hiding likes. And I mean, there's been talk of platforms hiding followers all stuff like that so what do we think of vanity metrics in general like how do we feel about them is it something that we look at like are the metrics that we actually track that's kind of what we're going to talk about today so I'm going to put it out to the group on what we think of them I think it's a hard one with vanity metrics because I think we all know that vanity metrics the likes follow accounts engagement like all the comments like we we know that that's like mainly a, a vanity thing we know that looking at that and just solely basing social media success on vanity metrics is quite vain from a perspective but I do think it's also hard to look at a brand and not look at the follower count and not let that affect your judgment almost um I think vanity metrics obviously as a brand they make you kind of obviously if they're quite high they make you kind of look good they can make you feel quite credible but I think equally looking at vanity metrics on their own just isn't enough in terms of like social like social media reporting as a whole because your vanity metrics might be amazing you might have loads of followers loads of likes you get loads of engagement but and then if that if that engagement or that traffic isn't going anywhere it kind of you have to ask yourself what is the point if your if your business isn't just on social media like doing ads on social media if you're trying to get I think it all depends on what your goals are because if you're trying to get your customers your audience to a website or to do some sort of conversion even if it's a free conversion if they're not doing that and it's just boosting your vanity metrics on social media then I think it's kind of like you have to ask yourself what's the point of tracking them they can obviously look good to other people but it 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 just depends on what your goals are I always think like actionable metrics where you can actually track them and you can see the effect on the business objectives they're just a lot more helpful in terms of like conversion engagement rate and obviously they're the ones that are less publicly available to the outsider Um, so I think it's just based on your goals but also yeah determining what you track as success I guess I think followers and things are potentially vanity metrics but I also agree with you that I think that there is some value in being interested Mm -hmm. in them and particularly if you can see how it aligns with a particular campaign that you've maybe just released or something because I think seeing a huge up up, like increase in in followers you know after you've just done like a a a cross-channel marketing campaign and released something then okay seeing an influx of followers potentially new people that have got eyes on the brand you can directly attribute to work that you've done so it feels like you know okay this has had a positive impact and we know why I think just generally being like setting an arbitrary figure that you want to reach from a follower perspective just because it's like not always that beneficial so like Kira said it's always coming back to having like particular goals in mind and understanding how your social media metrics tie into your you know wider marketing KPIs business objectives like what does that actually mean for you as a brand um but you know obviously I don't think there's ever going to be a time when brands or people are not going to care how many followers they've got or how many likes they've got or whatever but it's it's similar with like email and stuff because that you know you can have like van- vanity metrics with email yeah. can't you you know things like open rates like historically it's been like oh our open rates are great but yeah. then actually thinking of like you know a lot of systems like will automatically like mark emails as open or yeah. whatever it might be and then it's sort of like am I tracking something and giving myself credit for something that actually isn't really the case so it's just 
looking into why and how you're tracking certain things and if they actually mean anything at all. Do you have that burning desire to create a website for a new idea but don't have any coding experience? Don't worry, I've got you. Hostinger is a sponsor of today's episode and they have created an AI website builder tool allowing anyone who wants to take their idea online to do so with zero coding skills. Just write three sentences to sum up what you're looking for and Hostinger does the rest. The AI even offers personalized suggestions on layout, design and content. Content. Bring your new idea to life by heading to hostinger.com slash girls in marketing and use the exclusive code girls in marketing for 10% off your plan. What's stopping you? I do think kind of devil's advocate, I do think it does add credibility to have, mm-hmm. especially from like a follow-up perspective, because then people are obviously kind of seeing that people are interested, but then it's also like they will look, if we talk from like a social perspective, mm. they will also look at like the engagement on post so if you've got like you know a million followers but you're only reaching or you're only getting 10 likes or something like that you know we all see pages like it all the time they've got hundreds of thousands of followers but they're not reaching many people that obviously showcases like fake followers and stuff so I do think that consumers and other businesses are really turned on to that now so whilst it does add credibility I think they've got to be real like Mm. I don't think it's a case of you know just buying followers I know that's such like an outdated thing but there are businesses that still do it because they think it adds credibility but then it kind of doesn't really because you don't have the engagement to back it up and the first thing guaranteed that anyone will do if they want to work with you is they'll obviously check socials they'll say, oh, they've got, you know, 10,000 followers, but then they'll look on your engagement and you've got five likes. It's like, oh, well, it's just fake then. Mm. So I think it does add credibility to an extent, Mm -hmm. but I think ultimately it's about like, okay, well actually, you know, how do we do that? And it's the same with, if we think from an SEO perspective, you know, page views could be classed as like a vanity metric. I'll get in loads of page views, but how long are people actually spending on your website? Like what's a bounce rate? Like are people just clicking on and going off? Because like if you're implementing an SEO strategy, actually a vanity metric could be, oh yeah, we got, you know, 2000 page views, but they only stayed on for five mm-hmm. seconds. So, mm-hmm. you know, or, you know, two two seconds or something like that. I think page view, not page views, um, I think vanity metrics don't really mean a lot when it comes especially to more kind of like email, SEO, that sort of thing, rather than maybe social. Mm-hmm. Cause I think social's so outwardly facing that it kind of probably means more than it mm-hmm. does for other channels. Mm-hmm. And actually the other channels are obviously really great from that conversion perspective. So if you can get people from social, obviously to email or to your website and then convert off the back of that, I think that's a good thing. But yeah, it, it's really difficult because I do think, as you said, Amy, everyone's always going to care about followers yeah. and likes and stuff like that. Yeah. So it's never going to go anywhere. But I also think that I do understand it when businesses say, oh, it gives us credibility because, you know, I, I think it definitely does. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes it's a case of like just the more engagement that your post gets, the more it's seen. And even if just from that mm. perspective, like it's had more likes, therefore it's shown to more people, therefore you're going to want it to happen, whether mm-hmm. it's a vanity metric or not, it's having a, bo- a positive impact on your like content and its performance. And if it's content that, you know, the content team, the social team have put a lot of time into, then yeah, it is It is important then from that perspective, isn't it? It's yeah. not necessarily always going to be a groundbreaking metric from the perspective of like sales, but then I do think there's that conversation of like, okay, social media has got to have a positive impact on business performance in general, but it's not always got to be measured. Like every single social post has got to generate X amount of leads or, you know, generate X amount of income through sales. And I think that that's a very, you know, dated way to look at it and I don't don't think I think anyone who approaches social in that way is never going to really thrive from a social media perspective you know from like you know being really creative and having excellent content it, yeah it's not always going to directly translate that way so those vanity metrics are always I think going to be important aren't they it's mm-hmm. just how you measure them and yeah. not just solely being like oh yeah like we we've got loads of followers we're doing great yeah and I think it's hard as well for from like a marketer's perspective of like not falling into the trap of oh my god we've got this many like always bragging about your follower count because I found this obviously girls in marketing recently hit 300,000 followers on LinkedIn shout out um (laughs) but and then but so, it's not about followers, yeah, guys. That's the thing. That's yeah, the thing. Followers. I'm like, <laughs> Don't really. When I, when I was like thinking about doing a LinkedIn post about that, I felt really conflicted because I was like, 
sometimes I'll say, oh yeah, follow for your follower account doesn't matter. But then I'm like, but I'm gonna I'm about to do a post about we've hit three hundred thousand followers, and then it's like I think it's asking yourself why are you doing the post. Like you're not just saying you've got this many followers. You're saying like what people can learn from it and stuff. And you you don't want to just sit there and say look at us we've got this like it's not about the follower count for us it's about like the impact of the community it's about celebrating the community it's about like how many lives girls in marketing I know it sounds like quite deep but like how many lives it actually impacts and I think there's no issue in celebrating that so you just have to like kind of get across that you are celebrating that rather than just the follower count because yeah like we're saying like the follower count doesn't necessarily yeah always matter I mean at the end of the day followers increasing is always going to be a good thing for Mm -hmm. a brand it absolutely is it's just how you're using that information in relation to everything else that you know about how your you know social media performance is going how every other part of the business is going and not just focusing on it in isolation and going well our followers are going up so that's that we don't need to do anything else it's just it's within context of everything else isn't it yeah I think it's like how deep you want to dive into them as mm. well like you said Amy if you've got a campaign and your followers have boosted after that that's worked well like wait whether you look at that and think oh do we replicate that how can we like bring this conversation back around if you've got like followers and not followers engagement and like comments and likes and stuff people obviously like that conversation can we talk about that a bit more I think it just depends like if you're not just going to use them at the surface level does that make sense yeah yeah mm-hmm. absolutely yeah I think interesting as well because it would be good to hear everyone's thoughts on this but some especially from like a social media perspective some um social media platforms use like these vanity metrics as for the algorithm so if we take like TikTok for example mm-hmm. I know no one kind of knows the exact algorithm of all of these different things but loads of people say oh for example I've heard this theory that TikTok posts um, think he's out to your video to like 200 people and then mm-hmm. it depends on the engagement rate and then they push it out to like another 200 another 200 don't know if that's like right or not but I have he- heard that theory if so then TikTok does care about vanity metrics mm-hmm. and social media does you know there's some social media platforms actually do care mm-hmm. about it so mm-hmm. I don't know. It's a difficult one. It's, Mm -hmm. you know, we've got people saying, oh, don't worry about likes or don't worry about followers. But then on the other hand, you've got people saying, well, TikTok actually uses that as a metric to push your video out. So maybe it does matter. Yeah, I think it must it must be a mix because I think obviously TikTok, well, any social media platform is going to want you to increase your follower count because that obviously increases the more people that are invested into your account and what you're posting so are therefore more likely to going to come back to their social media platform and like spend more time on there I think TikTok very much do like both the vanity and the actionable ones because obviously TikTok are very like um much about the average time spent on the video and like percentage of video completed obviously the more they're pushing out more like longer videos now. So people are more likely to watch longer videos on the app and therefore stay on the app for longer. So I think TikTok is very much like a mix of both the actionable and the vanity. But I think all social media platforms, if they say they're not tracking the vanity metrics, they're probably kind of lying to an extent because I think uh, like Instagram wants the most amount of monthly active users. TikTok wants the most active users so I think it's just a fight for like all these like consumers attention and it's just getting people to spend as much time on social media as possible whilst everyone's fighting to not spend um Mm. as much time as possible on social media so I think it is just like yeah the battle of the social platforms Mm. yeah and I don't I don't know if that theory is correct Mm. but I've just heard people say it and I think that that. it, it is interesting but also I mean I've posted TikTok videos and it's like oh yeah, it's done really well in the first 200 views. It's got like a really good engagement rate and then TikTok just doesn't post it, it like doesn't continue the reach. So then I'm like, that theory is not correct. Like, you know, obviously there's mm. other aspects that come into it. Mm. So I think it's never just black and white. It's never like, yeah, this is how it works. And to be honest, like, not gonna lie, like social media gurus like that really annoy me when they're like, this is how this works because it's kind of like, yeah. does it work like yeah. that you know because I, I think take everything with a pinch of salt that sounds good sounds amazing in an ideal world okay this is how we hack the algorithm mm. but I don't think social media is that easy anymore mm. and no. I mean to be honest as well when we're talking about vanity metrics growing followers and getting likes and stuff like that is probably the hardest it's yeah, ever yeah. been um and I, I think if you are growing followers as much as we're saying 
they don't really matter too much. That's amazing because, mm. you know, we've all heard about how much social media is almost kind of like they're pushing other things now. The yeah. algorithms are changing. Like it's not as easy to be seen as it was, you know, five years ago. Mm. So, I mean, it, it's still a good thing, definitely, but it's just obviously the quality there so that people who yeah. are following you or people who are, you know, opening your emails or whatever are actually like staying, engaging and continuing that like loyalty with you as a brand. Mm -hmm. When I started my journey with girls in marketing as a business, like many of you, I was passionate about marketing, but there was so much I didn't know, especially the legal aspects involved in starting and running a business. One key area I wish I'd understood from the start is professional indemnity insurance. It's something many of us overlook, but it's crucial for anyone in a consultancy or service-based profession. So what is professional indemnity insurance? It's a type of insurance that protects you if a client alleges that you've made a mistake, given poor advice or been negligent in some aspect of your work that results in a financial loss or reputational damage to them. Professional indemnity is not just helpful, it's essential. It's about protecting your hard work, your reputation and your financial well-being. Kingsbridge Insurance has sponsored this episode of the podcast because they understand the challenges that we face and provide peace of mind when we need to focus on what we do best. So if you're a freelancer, small business or consultant and interested in learning more, you can visit the Kingsbridge website by going to kingsbridge.co.uk. Now, let's get back into the episode. But yeah, overall, how important would you actually say vanity metrics are? Do you think they're really important? Not that important? Oh, I mean, I feel like this whole episode is us being like, yes, it's important, but it's also not. So I yeah. feel like I'm very... 50-50 like if it was a scale of like one to five I'd probably say I'm about three <laughs> and I know like no one likes someone who sits on the fence but genuinely like I think it does in some cases I think it's circumstantial like situational and I also think in some cases yes in some cases no which isn't ideal really <laughs> but that's kind of how I feel about it mm. yeah I think it can yeah like I said before it depends on what you're using those vanity metrics for it depends you know how much context you have, like what context they sit within, if they're just like those metrics standalone and you've not really got anything to compare them to, whether it's a previous campaign, a previous month, whether you're actually using them to inform anything going forward, all of those things kind of impact the importance of them. And also I think that one vanity metric for one brand will be more, more important than a metric for another brand, just mm. depending on what industry you're in, um, how likely, you know, people engaging with your content from the perspective of a like, like, if you have any data on like how that tends to impact their behavior in other ways on other platforms because you know some brands may have really low social engagement but actually that doesn't have much of an impact on you know then the, the leads that they generate or whatever it might be so I think like Liv I'm probably kind of sitting on the fence and I'll just kind of say it's very contextual and very like dependent on your brand your business but one thing I will say is I think I certainly know that it's the case for me. Like more and more people are becoming quite stingy with how they engage with on social media. Like I think a lot more people now are like passive scrollers. Um, mm. I think if I give a piece of content a like or certainly a comment, if it's a brand, like that's because I really like what they've done. I really like their content. I'm not just throwing likes out here, there and everywhere. I just don't really do it. So I suppose maybe likes more than ever are an indication that people have liked your content and, you know, that particular piece or type of content's performed well. But yeah, I think I'm on the fence as well. <laughs> um, I would say I am also on the fence. I would <laughs> agree with Amy and say I probably, most of the time, I'm a passive scroller and if something really stands out to me, that's when I will engage with it. But I think, like I said before, I feel like it depends, again, like you said, Amy, on your business, your industry, and also how willing you are to dive deeper into the vanity metric and what's behind that and whether that's actually worth it for you and your business so I, I probably would say 50 50. What about you Kira? Um I don't I don't want to say the same but <laughs> I but do same. <laughs> but if I'm being totally 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 honest I think I would sway more towards they are more important mm -hmm. because I think just from my perspective and like being like being honest, looking on social, just I feel like how I'm programmed, how we are programmed as humans, I think you are you are like you do lean towards the accounts that have more followers, I guess. So I would say I am on the fence. However, I think naturally, secretly, I do like 
think vanity metrics are like secretly more important just from the perspective of like if some if an account's got loads of followers you like they normally celebrate it and like mm-hmm. I feel like you do have to celebrate the milestones of followers because it does you do put in a lot of effort to get mm-hmm. to the, the milestones so yeah I think I'd have to be yeah, that person it's like that herd mentality towards. almost isn't it like if you see that it's got a lot of followers then a lot of people must like them therefore you mm. just sort of automatically yeah, like you subconsciously kind of trust them give more them the and, credit automatically yeah and I don't I think like you say that's just a human instinct mm. isn't it so. yeah I'd really like to know what what everyone else thinks like our community so what we'll do is we'll pop a poll in this episode so let us know what you think do you think vanity metrics are good do you not let us know in the poll and that's a wrap on another team episode before you forget we'd love to make this a two-way conversation feel free to share your opinions on this episode with us on social media by tagging girls in marketing if you did enjoy listening to our team chat about marketing please follow and leave a review of the podcast so we can continue to grow and share more episodes like this one your support really does go a long way We'll be back next week with another amazing episode, but until then, join in the conversation on social media. See you next week.